What's up, everyone? Today's video, I'm going to showcase to you guys a deck that we've been missing for a long time. Pure Endemian. Endemian best deck, guys. Endemian deck football coming straight up. If you guys are ready for this video, I want you guys to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and I want you to check out the link down below where you guys are going to check out Alestrals, which I really believe has the potential to be one of the biggest card games in the world, hence why I'm backing it up so hard. I've been playing it nonstop with my brother. We play five games every single day. If you want to learn how to play Illustrials, I have multiple gameplay videos. Obviously, you can go check it out on my channel. From the highest peaks to the darkest forest and the deepest oceans, discover the enchanted mythical creatures known as Illustrials. Wield the power of the gods and elemental spirits. Clash for victory. Ascend to immortality. Illustrials card game, available now on Kickstarter. And they even have Trifernal in the game. So if you're a big fan of Trif and a big fan of Pendulums, you have to check out Illustrals. So if you guys ready for this video, let's get straight into it. And Demon Deck Profile, let's go. We have Servant, 3 Abductor, 2 Reflection. These are going to be the low scales that we're going to really focus on adding counters. So focus on getting these, as well as Magister. We are playing a heavy Endemian count because we're focusing on a lot of spells you guys are going to see soon. Insanely underrated the fact how these all they're all starters for you. With the Mastery and things like that, they hold counters and that's the idea behind this deck. You want to hold as many counters on these cards as humanly possible because it'll get you to your end, end idea to trigger your powerful monsters. So two of each is good, and it is focusing on level 7, so you need the reflection. Two Mighty Master, you don't need too much because it is accessible by your entire deck. So even three is a little too much because typically you want Beyond the Pendulum to search your Mighty Master. So two is really all you need. You just you want these to start and this to get at the very end. So two is a perfect number. You we play a small mythical beast count because it's really good this meta. There's no ash blossom and stuff like that. So Cerberus is solid. It kind of conflicts with Abductor, but if you open Abductor and Cerberus, keep in mind that no one plays Ash. So you're actually even able to play three Cerberus if you really want to. But I find two to be the perfect number. We play three different mythical beasts. The reason behind them is they each have their own value. This is a card that you search up Institution. Yes, we're playing Institution because we're playing a high spell count and a lot of cards that hold counters. So to gain a just a generic card does help a lot. We play this because it's a level 4. Sometimes you search this as a hand trap. Sometimes you search it as an MST out to Mystic Mine. And just the fact it's a level 4 because you do want to make Dweller. And the one Jackal, which is accessible by the entire deck. Two Curtain Razor. There's more extenders, more level 4s. It's a level 4. If it's not level 4, probably would not play it. And we have so many low scales. And you, you really focus on getting the low scales. So that's good on its own. Next, we play an Adventure Package. That's right. This is the Griffin. I don't know where my Griffin went. But we do play an Adventure Package. The reason why is because they're all great spells. It synergizes very well with this deck. Uh, to be able to start off with one of these and then to have a card like Cerberus or a card like, like Abductor to hold counters and then destroy your opponent gets gains absolutely absurd value. So on, on top of that, if you think of the opponent, think of the typical tier limit board. It's just a Solyak that you have to really worry about because the Dweller and stuff like that, the Solyak will get access to like three fusions, two fusions. But this stops Solyak because it's a non-effect monster. So in conjunction with the Pendulum cards that don't care for the Graveyard, when you combine it with an Adventure Package, it makes the matchup actually really powerful. So really good for you. I really do believe it's an amazing meta call. On top of that, because you're playing all these cards, we are playing a Magician Souls Package. Not only is this amazing with the... Not only is the Magician Souls Package amazing with the Adventure cards, but it's amazing with Institution, which you're also playing, and it's a Spellcaster. So it synergizes with the entire deck, and it's more extenders to make Beyond the Pendulum, and more cards with to put to the field before you pen summon. Next, yes, we are playing an adventure package. So you could say that this is kind of a brick per se, but it's not. Because you still need some value from the extra deck. So the reason why you're playing this is because you need value off the Crowley. Not only is Beyond the Pendulum a kill card, well, a, a plus, a cr crazy card, but you want to start off with Crowley. So you would prefer not to open the Blue Boy. If you open any of these, it's not a brick because of Artemis. So opening any of these is not a brick whatsoever. But just by having these, it, you're now able have the capability to go into Crowley to get your free plus. And because you're playing cards like Prep, prep uh, of Rights and Illusion of Chaos, you're actually able to put this back. And Souls does not need to send Illusion of Chaos. Souls, you don't want it to send Illusion of Chaos. It sends a Jackal or a Mighty Master. So by playing cards like this, you're actually still able to play this. And it's absolutely free plus with the Crowley. And it actually, it's the glue together that holds the deck together because it gives you so much free plus. Thing, uh, that's it for the monsters we still play the three institution with the whole adventure package the spellbook package the preparation of rights you're playing so many in engine spells and the crowley to get you secrets and knowledge that after this all you need is just three mastery upstart into the void in total the actual spells you're playing is 1 2 5 11 14 15 16 19 20 23 so you play 23 spells 
uh, cause these obviously get spells and most of these spells get multiple spells. So rather than draw cards that were kind of the issue with the draw cards in the past where you play 12 draw cards, there was a little bit of like, of like, you got to hope that you draw good cards and this there's search cards. So you don't, you already know exactly where your combo's going. You don't have to like pray and hope where you're, where you're drawing. You know specifically where your combo's going. So when you use the cards that you want to be negated first and you save your power cards for last, like Servant and Enchantress, it's just over. It's 23 cards, or 42 cards, absolutely amazing. And also one more thing I want to mention is Magister and Servant are level threes. So keep that in mind as I go into this extra deck. Extra deck, Crowley, Beyond the Pendulum. These are the big boys that you really need to focus on. Now, this first card that I cannot find, this is a Cherubini. You play lots of level three cards, Magister, Servant. These are searchable. You get to them every single turn. That's your game plan. So you're actually able to go to Cherubini very often. You know, the only issue why it's backwards is this is either Cherubini or a third Selene. So I'm going back and forth oh, with a third Selene or a Cherubini. The reason why is because I, I want the Shizu cards to be useless. This is also why we do not play Foolish Burial. By playing Cherubini, you give them an opportunity to Ishizu, your Enchantress, which is why Cherubini, you don't really need it. So it could be a third Selene, which does come up. These are the big boys. Artemis is very important in the deck as well. It makes it so your knowledge is insane. One Dark, which is important. One Masquerina, important for interruptions. One Unicorn, important. And three Selene. Three Selene comes up because of what, uh, a combo I'm going to show you guys at the very end. Uh, with Absolute Dragon, where you go Cross Sheep, Absolute Vortex, and that combo alone takes two Selenes. So when you play going first or going second, your idea first, you always want to, the way to play the deck, you first go Crowley. After Crowley, you go Beyond the Pendulum, and typically there will be a Jackal here with counters. And then after you Pen Summon, you go into your Selene. And then when you go Absolute Vortex, you go into a second Selene. So you still want your, you, you just wasted four power cards in your extra deck that are absurd. So once these are gone, you still want one more power card left in your extra deck as a follow-up. So that's why the third Selene is played. Apollosa and Axis Code Talker. One Dweller, obviously. This is why you play the Curtain Racer. This is why you play Abductor. Well, Abductor for other reasons. And this is also why you play the Garura. So when you're facing, when you know you're facing Tier Limit, you go out of your way. You go out of your way to go for Dweller. Sir Bruce is not searching for Jackal, it's searching for Garura. Beyond the Pendulum is always searching for Abductor. All this type of stuff. There's lots of ways to do this. Servant will always special the Abductor, always. So there's lots of ways to get to the Abductor, lots of ways to get to level fours, Beyond the Pendulum, everything. So focus on the level fours, but mighty important. You need to Dweller them, that's all you need to focus on post side. And the last three cards, which I lost, is Cross Sheep, Absolute, and Vortex Dragon. So you guys know those cards. I don't even know where mine are. I have like four copies oh, yeah, of each. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it for the profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The deck's yeah, absolutely yeah, insane. I'm going to show you guys a lot. You're going to see lots of other YouTubers with with this list. Because I'm telling you guys, this is the list to play this format. People are going to play anti-meta decks like, like Flunder. That doesn't do jack shit. But when you play an anti-meta pendulum deck, this deck cannot lose to tier limit. Because if you think of the tier limit interruptions, what are they? Soliac, which you don't care about. Maybe a Baron, you still don't care about it. What's two interruptions? What a, a Dracostapalia? Do you think this deck cares about these type of interruptions? Those are the only interruptions you have to deal with. The other interruptions are irrelevant. Dweller, Bisted, Ashizu. We build this deck. Do you see a dark room in there? Do you guys see restage? Do you guys remember how much we loved restage? There's no restage in this in this deck. We built this deck specifically to destroy the most played deck this format. On top, think of decks like Sprite. That deck cannot deal with the Cerberus in the field. With big boy monsters attacking, it destroys all the meta. And don't get me started on the amazing matchup versus Flunder. So keep that in mind. There's a reason why this Pendulum Propaganda is going to be everywhere on YouTube in the next two weeks. It's absolutely amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Pen best deck. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. From the highest peaks to the darkest forest and the deepest oceans, discover the enchanted mythical creatures known as Elestrals. Wield the power of the gods and elemental spirits. Clash for victory. Ascend to immortality. Elestrals Card Game, available now on Kickstarter.